Hello, Bezel Triple Three here. I'd like to talk about the Book of Revelation. I did a video recently on the Secret Rapture, and I thought that I need to do a little bit more by way of explanation. Now, the other night, my wife and I went and had dinner with some friends of hers. Uh, the fella is a doctor. He's also Jewish, and he told me about a book that he read that he found very helpful. It was written by a Christian pastor by the name of Will Bowen. He's the uh, pastor of a church called Christ Church Unity in Kansas City, Missouri. So, of course, that piqued my interest a little bit. Anytime a non-Christian tells me they, they read a book by a Christian pastor and they liked it, uh, I always like to see what it's about. It's called A Complaint-Free World, and as far as self-help is concerned, I'm sure it's, uh, it's very productive and very helpful. He also has a, uh, a bracelet, I think it's purple, that helps uh, you remember the things that he talks about in the book. I think the purple bracelet also signifies uh, support for uh, Alzheimer's and lupus, by the way. Anyways, I went to the website for the church and found some video that he had done of some of his sermons, I guess you could call them, and found some interesting stuff. He does talk about Revelation, and that's how I'd like to start our discussion. All of this is pinned on the book of Revelation in the Bible. The book of Revelation is the least significant book in the Bible, and yet it's becoming the most important book in the Bible. Now, why do I say it's the least significant book in the Bible? It is a book that didn't even make it into the Bible the first 900 years. In 973 CE, the Eastern Orthodox Church finally said, okay, we'll put it in, because it was popular. But the book of Revelation was not in the Bible. All right, a kind of a side note of this video is don't trust everything you hear from a quote-unquote Christian pastor. Um, what he's saying about Revelation not being included in the canon until 900 uh, AD, uh, or I think he says CE, uh, it's just not so. This book is great. The New Testament documents, Are They Reliable? by F.F. F. Bruce. He writes, Origen, uh, who live 185 to 254, mentions the four Gospels, the Acts, the 13 Pauline epistles, 1 Peter, 1 John, and Revelation, as acknowledged by all. Uh, Athanasius, in 367, lays down the 27 books of the New Testament as alone canonical. And then we have the Council of Carthage in uh, 397 AD uh, in North Africa. The present 27 books in the New Testament we have today, they uh, ascribed as authoritative. And we must remember that the early church did not create a canon. They recognized a canon as these letters and these uh, gospels were used throughout the churches and recognized as authoritative and divinely inspired. Now, Back to this very significant book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, which is significant for every century of church history, including our own. One of the reasons that I feel uh, that my interpretation of um, 1 Thessalonians is correct, that it doesn't teach a secret rapture, is due in large part to the way I understand the book of Revelation. You see, I think to try to understand Revelation chronologically is, uh, is, is tantamount to trying to drive someone loopy by giving them an indecipherable code that they need to figure out. What I want to do is show you uh, very quickly how I approach the book of Revelation. So allow me to do that by giving you seven sections that I want to kind of uh, cut the book up into. And let, let me show you that right now. Now, as you can see, I've put down here three uh, distinct uh, divisions or sections. We've got Christ in the midst of the lampstands, uh, chapters 1 and 3. Uh, we've got the vision of heaven and the seals. This is chapter 4 through the end of chapter 7. And then the third uh, section, we've got the seven trumpets, uh, chapters 8 through the end of 11. Now, these three sections kind of compose one of two main divisions in the book. The second division, uh, or the second uh, kind of main area of the book, is going to be these remaining four, which is going to be uh, the persecuting dragon, chapters 12 through 14. We've got the seven bowls, 15 and 16, the fall of Babylon, and of course the beasts, uh, you've got 17 through 19, and then the Great Consummation, which is chapters 20 through 22. Okay, why seven sections? Well, the reason is, is because there's one story to Revelation. Now, that sounds funny. 
But what I'm trying to say is these seven sections are telling the same story. It's the same story uh, being, being uh, brought to you in word pictures saying the same thing. There is a time frame. The time frame is between the first and second coming of Christ. And each of these sections tell the story of this struggle between Satan and Jesus Christ between his first and second coming. Now let me try to explain this. In the first section, we have Christ among the lampstands. And what we have here is not uh, various uh, types of churches in various ages of, of church age, but rather how the church behaves and what kind of characteristics a church has at any given time during this uh, dispensation, you might say, this time period between the first two comings. How about Christ uh, being glorified in chapter 4, being able to sit down in glory next to the Father and open the seals? Here again, it's happening right after the first coming, and we, we see the judgment being declared at the end of chapter 7. Now, chapter 8 through 11, through the end of 11, is the seven trumpets. And again, we have the warnings of uh, trumpet judgments, and then at the end, we have an actual uh, judgment from God against unbelieving mankind. We'll talk about the end of chapter uh, 11 before we end, because um, I want to get back to that rapture idea that I have, that we're, we're not waiting for a secret rapture of the church. Now, chapter 12 begins that second major division I talked about, where things are now going to, it's the same story, but things are now going to get heightened and more intense in the word pictures. But it's the same story being retold. In chapters 12 through 14, you have uh, the woman and the man-child signifying Christ in the church. Christ goes up into heaven, as he did when he ascended, the beginning of of this time period between the first and second coming. You have the seven bowls. Again, we have judgment at the end. Then we have the, the fall of the beasts and the harlot. Again, we have judgment at the end. And then, of course, the last one, beginning with the millennium. Now, that may seem a little uh, confusing, but if you think in terms of the millennium being not literal thousand years, but symbolic of the entire time between the first and second coming of Christ, where Satan is bound, and he's bound in a particular way. He can no longer deceive the nations. The gospel is going forth everywhere. And that's why I want to talk about uh, um, Revelation chapter 11. So let's take a look at that real quick before we end. Now, at the end of uh, chapter 11 of Revelation, we have the two witnesses. Now, think of the two witnesses symbolizing the church in its missionary and preaching uh, arms, um, the preaching of the gospel in the churches and the missionaries as they go out. Both are proclaiming the gospel. They do this for 1260 days, which is the same as 42 months or a time, times, and a half a time, three and a half years. This is, any way you want to slice that, it's this present time period between the first and second coming of Christ. What happens? When they have finished their testimony, they're killed. Um, so there's going to be a very, very small period of time right before the end of this present age that things are going to get very, very bad for the church. And when it seems that all hope is lost, what happens? The two um, witnesses are brought to life and they go up to heaven. And guess what happens next? The final judgment. You see it again there. So these are all telling the same story seven different times from seven different angles. Now, if the millennium is present right now, then where does this secret rapture fit in? You see, what we're waiting for is the consummation of all things, which includes the second coming of Christ, the resurrection of the dead, the judgment of unbelieving mankind, and the beginning of the new or the renewed heavens and earth. That's kind of a thumbnail sketch of the way I look at Revelation. I hope you found it helpful. Think about it. Read each of those sections and see how they parallel each other.